Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to play one of my favorite games. Today we are playing, wait, what? This is free? And yes, this is what we're talking about today is DaVinci Resolve, and it is free, or mostly free. We'll see some of the details there in a second, but just know, for the majority of your needs, you can use this completely free. Uh, what it is is an end-to-end -end video post-production studio. So basically, what you do is you take your raw video from your phone, from your camera, from wherever, and then you, you cut it down into shapes, you um, color correct it, you add special effects, you can integrate in some 3D stuff, uh, then there's even a full audio editing suite in here called Fairlight, and then you produce your results. And as I mentioned, and this is kind of a key point, it's free. Now, the reason why we were talking about DaVinci Resolve today is, first off, I've got a ton of recommendations. Second off, hey, let's beat that dead horse a little bit more. It's free. And third, uh, DaVinci Resolve 17 was just released. It is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Now, in terms of it's free that I keep going on about, well, let's look at some of the details there. So you're going to see there's two versions of it, DaVinci Resolve 17 and DaVinci Resolve Studio 17. And you're thinking, oh, this is going to be really gimped down. But no, it really isn't. If you need to do basic video editing, and I'm talking... This is going to be the dumbest thing I say today. Advanced basic editing, this is perfect for you. It's only when you start getting into like the special effects or we're talking real high-end video, like 120 frames per second at 32K resolution. And yeah, I'm not kidding there. Uh, that's what you need Resolve Studio 17 for. So we're going to jump in, take a look at DaVinci Resolve, and then we'll come back and look a little bit about that uh, studio upgrade. Welcome then to DaVinci Resolve. Now we're going to go hands-on with it. And keep in mind, I am no expert at all, but I'm going to show you the very basics of it. So if you want to go ahead and cut your own trailer or whatever, you should be able to by the end of this. And what you're going to see with the DaVinci Resolve workflow is it's pretty simple left to right. So you got here, media, this is where you organize your files. Cut is where you kind of cut your film together. Edit is where you edit your films. Uh, Fusion is where you add special effects out the wazoo. Color is where you color grade and color correct. Fairlight is where you add your audio in. And Deliver is where you, well, deliver. So where you're going to probably find a lot of times is you might just have to go into the cut, cut your frames down, and then deliver. That might be all you need to do. So we're going to look at a very simple example here. We're in the media area. What I'm going to do is start adding things I'm going to use to my media pool. Now for my title screen, I used a cut from Akira. I don't think I'm going to do that today because of DMCA, but what I'm going to do is grab two clips of my dog and we'll grab the uh, Akira watermark for this particular example. Let's pretend my dog's name was Akira and we're going to go and add to the media pool. So they're now part of the media pool. We're going to move forward to the cutting phase. Now that we were in the cutting phase, you see here in the timeline, I'm not really 100% certain where we're at. So what I'm going to do is go ahead, add this guy in, and we can insert the clip uh, into the timeline using a time code. We're going to set it at zero. We got tracks. This is zero. Yeah, sure. And what it's going to say is, there, done. All right, so here you can see entire timeline. We can scrub through it up here like so. See the video in action down below. And what I'm going to do immediately is mute this so you don't have to hear the, the terrible audio in this. So this is uh, pretty much where uh, you would... Uh, organize cuts and splits and so on. So let's say I only wanted the first little bit of this particular clip. I could go from here to say, I don't know, we'll get it around the corner. There we go. And there. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead, like go ahead and do like a split here. And we don't need that video anymore. We'll delete it. So now what we've done is we've done part of the cutting process. Um, pretty straightforward. Now with that actually cut, in the timeline, like so. Let's do ahead something like this. We can go ahead and speed it up. So let's put that in there. We're gonna do this at two and a half times. What you're gonna find is a sped up dog, by the way, is a thing of horror. So let's go ahead and see the results here. There we go, yeah, yeah. All right, there we go. Our dog's around the corner, happy and good to go. So we probably at this point in time uh, want to have another clip in our scene. We're going to grab another beautiful shot of my dog, and then we'll track forward to that point. So there's where the cut is. You can see it in action right there. So let's go between the cut. And one of the things that's really common that you're going to want to do potential is some kind of transition there. So we'll go over here to the transitions tab and we'll drop one in here. We'll do an eye iris transition. We'll grab that guy there. Come on, on you go. Boom. All right. So now we've got a transition. We cut between the two. Like so. And then you can basically keep making cuts, bring things in. Now, another thing you may actually want to do at this point in time is a bit of an overlay. So you might have a watermark or something in your video, uh, probably back to the very beginning of it. So all the way here, let's pretend my dog's name was Akira. So I'll go back to the media pool, grab that logo. This is just a, an image file of some kind and bring it in. Now you're going to find, okay, that might be, that might be a little bit big. So what we're going to do is basically just select that one. We'll zoom it down. All right, there we go. And we'll position it. So let's move it a little to the right. Move it a little bit up. 
like so. All right, we're good to go. And then you're going to basically decide how long you want it to show and so on. But another thing you might find is, okay, well, that doesn't really pop as much as we'd like. Let's add a special effect on it. Come in here, and then there's your effects. And we got a number of different ones. What I want to do is, and you can see them here as you scroll through. Now, this is an area where studio and uh, free kind of result. When you got into like a lot of these video effects, for example, uh, a lot of these resolve effects, and I haven't figured out which ones are and aren't included, you're limited in the number of effects you can apply to your scene. So if you're using a lot of effects, uh, you're gonna probably wanna upgrade versions. That's, that's the big difference between free and not free. Uh, so I wanna do here is a drop shadow. Just grab the drop shadow effect, drop it on my image like so. Go over here to the effects tab. There is my drop shadow. I'm going to make it a white effect as opposed to, a, oop, let me go here. Come on. There we go. Make it white. Uh, we don't want it to drop off that much, but we don't want it to blur either. There we go. By the way, you can, you can zoom in and expand around on these scenes however you wish. But let's say we like our effect. We like where we're going with that. Then what we do is move on to the editing phase. Uh, this is a really kind of nice. Here's where you can start doing things like I can use alt middle mouse button, zoom in my timeline. We could bring in a couple clips. What I'm going to say here is, oh, well, this guy, I want the watermark for the entire duration of the video, like so. Um, yeah, so this is where you, you start doing the, the editing type things you've got. Another thing that you might find, so here we've got an audio track in there. Uh, we could come in here and go ahead, audio effects, and we could do things cross face, smooths, and so on, or we could have it... Um, Come on, audio effect, here we go. So if we wanted to have a de-esser, we could de-ess our sound, and there you go. So there's all kinds of things in there. There's gotta be a compressor here somewhere. Uh, noise reduction in there. So if you need to do some editing to your audio, you can basically start triggering those in. Then when you have done that editing phase, we move into fusion. And fusion is where you lose me. This is the superpowers area of DaVinci. This is where you can bring all the kind of stuff together, which is I assume why it is called diffuse, um, the, the, Fusion, sorry, my brain just went bleh, bleh, bleh here. So you see here, you got this node-based thing. So we got the median, and then we got the output. So what we could do here, for example, is I could add a tool in. So let's say we wanted to do a film grain. Uh, now I have to remember where film grain was. Film, film grain. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna break that link here, and then I'm gonna drop this into the film grain link. And say here, and I could also, we got two views we can work with, so I can show this on the left view. So there is our result, and pop it out to the right view like so, and now I can change and control. So go here, film grain selected, and then we could say how much film grain, so let's add a lot of film grain on, and there you're seeing the end result. But there is so much more you can do here that I, I'm not even going to even come close to being able to show you. But you hear from you see the add tools, you can get into some of the ideas here. You got things like you work with LUTs, you've got a number of special effects you can key in here. Uh, you can bring in 3D objects like FBX files and so on. You can mix 3D and 2D, do camera matching, do facial tracking. Basically all of the special effects magic is here in Fusion and there is a ton of it and it is massively beyond me. At the same time, you've got keyframe. You can keyframe the heck out of anything in the scene. Uh, any of the values on it, you can keyframe them over time so you could do really elaborate animations. And then once you are done with the fusion section, we move on to the color correction section. Uh, this is where you can, you know, edit. And by the way, we got the three different sections here. We can, I think we can also click select so we can do them all at the same time. But then we can do things like start changing out the uh, color on it. I mean, just, I should have gotten a real time preview. So I'm surprised I'm not seeing that. Uh, but you can, um, edit out the color correction of it. You can change things out in that regard once you're like happy with the color. Then you move on to Fairlight. Fairlight is a completely integrated audio solution. Uh, you've got uh, mixers in here. You've got a uh, meter built in here. You've got, again, a number of different effects you can do on your channel. So we got here our audio here. And this is where you basically can start doing uh, special audio stuff to your thing, a, a fully integrated uh, system. You've also got an effects library you can work from. So for some reason I wanted to throw uh, a flanger on my audio track. Sure, why not? You can go in here and you've got an integrated flanger. So you've almost got like a mini DAW built in here as well for fully working on the soundtrack side of your solution. And then finally, you're done. You're ready to deliver. And here is where you go ahead and render out your your project to a variety of different resolutions, which by the way, Studio supports up to 4K and I think it's 60 frames per second. 
got a number of different codecs to work with. You can render out a single clip or the entire thing, and this is where you would render it. Now, and again, another difference between Studio and Pro is the level of GPU acceleration. So I think Studio might actually render a bit faster, but here is where you publish out your, your actual masterpiece. Now, truth of the matter is, if you come in here and just pretend this tab doesn't exist, and that this tab doesn't exist, and that this tab doesn't exist, and you basically use cut, and edit, you can use this as a very straightforward film editor, not a huge amount of learning curve. You could use this to cut your trailers, your simple videos or whatever, and get it done. No problems at all. It's when you start getting into here, this is where your learning curve is going to massively, massively increase. But also that's where the magic and the power of this tool are. So you can look at this and be terrified from it, but if you wanna come in, just a quick, easy learning curve, just stick with cut and edit for now, and you will probably get 90% 90, 90 of where you're going if you're working on pretty basic stuff. And then when you start wanting to get into special effects and so on, that's where you start learning about these other features. So that is a quick, simpleton, hands-on with DaVinci Resolve. 17. Now here we are back at the web page, DaVinci Resolve 17. So again, I mentioned earlier on DaVinci Resolve, what we saw here in the free version, you can do everything. It's when you start getting into those special effects and color grading and some advanced stuff, that's when you got to buy Studio. But you'll notice 295, that's pretty reasonable. So come on over here. Let's go take a look at what Studio does versus doesn't do. So it says here, right there, the free version is packed with more features than most paid software applications. You can use it to edit in up to 60 frames per second. So yeah, I was right there. 4K video, tools such as Luma, HS, 3D keyers, color warpers, and so on and so forth. But then you get into the studio version has 50 advanced features. Studio includes DaVinci Neural Engine, additional Resolve FX, um, stereoscopic 3D, and more. So this is where you get on the studio side of things. In this case, if you need to render up to 32K resolution, I don't even want to know what that would do to your computer, at 120 frames per second with 10-bit color, uh, that's when you need to upgrade it up to DaVinci Resolve Studio. And then, of course, the thing that is probably going to get you there, uh, I mentioned mentioned earlier on, more GPU acceleration, so it will perform better with studio version, advanced noise reduction, lens distortions, HDR scopes, stereoscopic 3D, remote grading, scripting automation, color space transform language, workflow integration plugins, and then of course, and this is what's going to probably get you, a lot of the Resolve effects are in studio. So there is where if you find yourself needing those special effects, things like analog damage, dirt removal, lens reflections, lens flares, and so on, that's when you're going to need to upgrade or the uh, DaVinci Neural Engine uh, uses state-of-the-art deep neural networks and machine learning to power many of the features found exclusively in studio. Those include things like facial recognition and truth of the matter is a lot of times you're not going to be using them. If you're cutting a simple trailer, you don't need this stuff. Now, I know you're gonna look at them and go, oh, I want that, but truth of the matter is you're probably not going to need a lot of the stuff that in pro and then we get also 3d audio support uh, so yeah definitely uh, some stuff at uh, the studio level that you don't get in the free version but the free version isn't by any definition of the word gimped it's the special effects stuff and the advanced pro features there is what you're not getting so if you need a tool that is free to cut your trailer to make some edits and that kind of stuff davinci resolve is an excellent choice it is complicated, of course, and 17 was just released. Now, I'm not going to go through the details of what's new here. One thing to be aware, if you were using a previous version, the database changed, so you're going to need to upgrade for this release. And here you can get an idea of what is new. There, there's quite a bit of improvements here. So I'm, I'm not, again, I'm not going to go through what all changed in 17, but I will link this in the article down below. So if you're already a DaVinci um, user, uh, this is what's new. There's there's a lot here, but that is what was involved in the 17 upgrade that will be linked in the linked article down below. Now, don't get me wrong. I, DaVinci Resolve is not for everyone. I'll actually be 100% honest, even though I'm doing this right now, you may notice I'm actually still using Camtasia for it myself. Uh, that's because my needs aren't really that complicated and I find Camtasia very comfortable. The same thing is, so I started to go really effects heavy. I would probably personally use HitFilm. I find it easier to work with and I like it um, and, and you get a little bit more in the special effects sites out of the box on HitFilm Express. But the cool thing here is if you've got zero money to spend between DaVinci Resolve and HitFilm Express, you have a lot of excellent options out there. Just do be aware there is a lot of complexity here but you can stay away from it. If you just need basic video editings, just pretend these guys don't exist right here, and uh, yeah, you're pretty good to go. So then that is where the complexity is hit, especially here in Fusion. There's also that complexity equals power, and I probably think this would be one of the most powerful video editing tools out there. Uh, so 
yeah, yeah, definitely worth learning if video editing is your trade or you want to get more into like a special effects and that kind of stuff. This is where you're going to want to jump in and learn more and more. So anyways, that was DaVinci Resolve, an idiot's kind of entry level tutorial as well as an overview. Uh, it just released version 17, completely free for all major platforms. And uh, yeah, let me know what you thought. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.